right, so this will be another video talking about the kinematic equations. In this one, I will attempt to verify these two formulas, these two uh, equations here, using purely just a graph. So the idea is we have constant acceleration. So if I come down here and I draw a little graph, I make this my acceleration to time graph, that means, I'll just call it A subscript 1, that means I have a constant acceleration of A subscript 1, and let's say I have that out to some time T1. So since it's constant, it's going to be a straight line, and it's going to go out to T1. Well, something that's pretty interesting about this is underneath this line here, this area, this area is your change in your velocity. Okay. You may be wondering, well, why is that? Well, consider just the units. Let's say the time is in seconds or something, and the acceleration is in meters per second. If I calculate the area of this rectangle, then I'm going to take the base times the height, which is the acceleration times time. Now if you consider the units, acceleration in meters per second squared and time in seconds, the seconds will cancel there and you'll be left with meters per second. And that's a velocity. Well, this turns out to be the change in velocity over that time interval with this acceleration. So, if I'm to write that, if the area of the rectangle is equal to the change in velocity and the area of the rectangle is equal to acceleration times time then the change in velocity is equal to acceleration times time we learned in previous videos that the change in velocity is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity this should be intuitive it's just you know the change in velocity if you have a change of money in your pocket you know the money, amount of money in your pocket changed, then however much money you had to begin with subtracted from how much you have now is how much that money in your pockets changed. So this should be intuitive. It shouldn't be anything you're trying to memorize. That So we can rewrite this expression down here as the final velocity minus the initial velocity is ex equal to acceleration times time. And if I add initial velocity to each side, get the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. So there's the first one, and you can see that with this constant acceleration graph, because it's constant acceleration, so the line is straight, and then it's simply the change in velocity, simply the area under that graph. Well, what if we were to look at the velocity graph? All right, so imagine we draw the velocity graph, velocity to time. Now our acceleration was constant so whatever we started at let's say we had some sort of initial velocity whatever we started at after one second we would have added whatever the value of the acceleration was so let's say you know went up a and after the second second from this value it would have went up a as well and it would continue to rise linearly now if you know calculus, you could take integrate a constant and you'll get a line, which should be another proof that this is indeed a line whenever you have constant acceleration. Since the acceleration is constant, that means the velocity is linear. And since the velocity is linear, you could do so many shortcuts to any problems that involve constant acceleration. So let's say you have your initial velocity or your final. So here's your final, here's your initial at some point t1. So in this case, <clears throat> what would be the area under this curve? This will be the displacement. How do I know that? Well, let's say velocity, let's say it's read in meters a second. And time, let's say, is in seconds. If you take the area by multiplying them, you'll end, those units will cancel the seconds, and you'll be left with meters, which is the displacement. So, 
for this uh, for this particular problem though there is one issue right here we just need to split this area up right here and this will be our area of our triangle and this will be the area of the rectangle all right we know the total area is equal to our displacement and the total area is also equal to the area of the triangle plus the area of the rectangle so the area of the triangle is going to be base times height or the rectangle is going to be base times height and the base is T and the height is VI so the area of the rectangle is V I T. Alright, so what's the area of the triangle? Well, the area of the triangle is equal to one half base times height. So the area of the triangle is equal to one half. The base of this triangle is uh, T, one half T, and the height is going to be V F minus V I. We know VF minus VI is equal to the change in V, right? So this will be delta V here, all right? So this will be the other portion. So we have VIT for the area of the rectangle and one half T change in V for the area of the triangle. So to, I'll put that together over here. So what we have is the displacement, remember? The total area or the displacement here is equal to V I T plus one half T change in V. All right, well we're not quite where we need to be yet because we need AT squared there. But if you look back over at the acceleration graph, we can express change in V as the area under this curve or the base T times the height A, A T. So I can take this value here for change in V and plug it in for change in V down here and then we get the displacement is equal to V I T plus one half A T squared. All I did was took A T and it replaced it for the delta V here. The T's came together, made T squared, and we have the A right here. Delta X, or change in X, is the final position minus the initial. So we have X final minus initial is equal to V I T plus one half A T squared. Add the initial position to each side, and you get the final position is equal to the initial position plus V I T plus one half A T squared. And that is this. So that's all. I mean, if you have a constant acceleration down here, then that means your velocity is linear, which means since it's linear, you could also deal with averages to calculate in between as well. There's a lot of things you can do because the average here would be VI plus VF over 2, which would be right around here. Now if I took this area here and chopped it off, it would fit perfectly right here. And I would have, this would also be my area, the, or the uh, displacement would also be my average velocity between I and F times the t change in time which we'll go into more in future videos but for now I just wanted you to see that <clears throat> the relationship of these formulas to their graphs and how they're in a sense common sense well thank you for watching